Hello, hello, hello. Who do we have out there in the void of space tonight? Welcome to a very special Space Engineers live stream. Today, I am joined by none other than Marek. Marek, hello. <laughs> Welcome. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. It's so good to see everybody. Um, yeah, and this is it. This is another year has passed. This is the ninth anniversary. Today is the is the to this day is the nine years since Space Engineers came out. So, join us as we take a trip down memory lane and almost certainly get a bit nostalgic about uh, the history of Space Engineers as well as the future and some of the things of, of what's to come. So we've got all kinds of people in the chat tonight. Look at that. Let's have a look. Um, we're going to start off, actually. You guys knew this was coming. Let me see in the chat then. Let me know. Hey, and Vlado's watching as well. Great. Hopefully we have some of our team members in the chat as well. Let me just... Uh, I'm going to resize uh, you, change Mark. Uh, let's just ask the chat right off the bat. How many years have you guys been following Space Engineers? Nine years today since it released in the Steam Early Access in 2013. But let me know, which was the year, in fact, put a year in the chat when you joined us and this uh, epic community. Let's have a look. All of them, all the years. Okay. Interesting. Very, very nice. We have many OGs, old timers. We do indeed. Look at that. 2013. Uh, four years, one year ago. But that's what's also great is to see is, okay, we've got a lot of OGs in the chat, but still we had people joining us just last year. Amazing. Some people have joined us in the future. 20. 202005. Incredible. Time travel is in the chat. <laughs> wow. That's so great to see. Remember watching the first trailer? Well, we are going to go way back to 2013 and actually have a look at uh, some things that you've seen before. Uh, at least some of you will have seen it. Uh, some things that also, those things also probably will be new to some people, but also. We have some never seen before, uh, actually, images of uh, behind the scenes of Space Engineers development. And I just saw them for the first time as well. And they are, they are, they're, they're going to be uh, quite, quite something for you guys to see. So some of the, the history of, I guess, not just the game, but also of uh, the company and Marek. So we'll, we'll get to those in a little bit here. But amazing, amazing. Thank you, guys. I want to start off the stream by actually just thanking you uh, for your many years of support and creating so many countless creations, mods, scenarios, and sticking with us. Because as, you, as I say quite often, it's been a great ride. And um, still, we still have a lot, a lot up our sleeve. So we'll get, might get to that later. Um, Marek, how, I mean, how, how do you even start? How would you summarize... Um, the, the last the last nine years could you put it into like one or two words like just like to sum it up like for me it would be extraordinary <laughs> probably I'm really thinking oh. yeah and I put you on the spot there <laughs> and uh... I mean, I don't want to just use some word, you know. Okay. Let's like, say like, like amazing or extraordinary. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's pretty generic. Okay, maybe then just like, I think I, asked, I feel like I've asked you this. I'm trying to ask you something that I didn't ask you last year. That's what, because I wanted, what I wanted to ask you was, uh, you know, back in 2013, could you have, could you have imagined what, where space engineers would be today. But I think I've asked that before, but it was maybe like last year or the year before, but I think we can ask it again in general, like when you were back, you know, all those years ago and you were designing space engineers, like, and you saw the future of the game in your head, is 
like how does that compare i guess to where we are now so so let me first answer the first question okay. i was thinking about Unfortunately, I don't have just one word, maybe a few words, but, you know, maybe there is a word for these few words somewhere in the dictionary. So it's like, uh, or let's say I will have two or three descriptions. So one is that it was, the last nine years was as I imagined them to be, you know, in some sense. And, uh, or some big parts of it were as I imagined it before, you know, space engineers happened. So that's one. Another is, uh, you know, those words like amazing, spectacular, those kind of words. And third one would be this need to create hasn't died out, you know, in me and also in our community. So uh, it's like no matter what you achieve, it's still not enough. You know, you need to do more or create more. So if there is a word for this, then, then that word. There you go. I mean, it's uh, yeah. Actually, now I think of it, I I actually came up with that quite quickly. But I think if I had to if I had to pick one word, it probably wouldn't be be that. It's it's, it's quite hard to even say it. It's it's just really been. Um, I think also like. I think for, there's there's probably a point of view from the community, but also as developers and especially. Uh, I feel like the feeling is similar, but for me, this this journey it's been quite almost emotional, I'd say. <laughs> but maybe that's just me. I don't know. But in a good way, in a good way, it's really, really been incredible to see uh, where it's come. And what's what's amazing is you you think that the game has come out so long ago, and actually, in in many elements, it's actually still growing. And we have a really great community, a healthy community, and so many people are you know are continuing to find the game and still play these play the game all these years on which might lead me to the next question i often ask is let me know in the chat how many hours do you have in space engineers um uh, well i say we can you can guys can put that down why while, while uh Marek, uh maybe oh, it's the second question i had just about like wait how the game is compared to back in 2013 how you kind of saw it uh kind of playing out so I was expecting it will get big uh, in terms of features, functionality, complexity, and some kind of emergence and open-endedness and open-worldness. And uh, I would say it really happened or it evolved in the best possible way that I envisioned. Of course, it could be you know even even bigger, like um, like more sales or you know like even more players and so on but i think what we achieved is pretty good and pretty amazing and uh, the game itself has much more blocks and features than i envisioned in right now you know i i wasn't i don't know maybe i, I didn't know what will happen after nine years or something like that so i thought maybe someday we will run out of the ideas or blocks or you know those kind of things but it doesn't seem to be the case and there is still many new blocks that can be added to the game many new game modes and and so on so uh, i was really in the beginning i was envisioning engineering sandbox where people can build things and start modding the game so they can uh, expand it even more uh, they can expand it on their own, they are not blocked by us, and all this happened. And uh, so even the modding community is something that I was kind of expecting or hoping that will happen, and it actually happened. And it's hard to say if it is even better than I expected, but it's really maybe even better than I expected. You know, so like people are, people are modding the game even in ways that I would not expect, because maybe it's hardcore level of modding you know and and like so i think this yeah amazing i mean uh it's for sure like again i from the moment i saw space engineers that first trailer it, I, it was like this is the game i've been waiting for my entire life you know this is my, my dream is always to be able to create my very own spaceship and 
I think I've always had my own kind of, even way back then I had these ideas of what the, what the game become. But it's, it's, it's really, really great to see that. I, d I definitely didn't see, uh, you know, uh, how it would turn out for myself, but just like um, the fact that there is still uh, so many great things on the way is is really encouraging. Like I think we 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 had a word like, as this is from a player point of view, like we picked the right game. You know what I mean, <laughs> pick the right game to uh, to back because it's it's been such a yeah such a ride, such a ride. And we have some really veterans in the chat, Marek. Uh, I'm not sure if you got a peek at some of those hours. I mean, many people over a thousand hours, six thousand, four thousand, seven thousand, incredible. Um, I just check myself because I, I often ask it, but I, I actually have 6,583 hours. So I'm pretty, pretty up there, <laughs> but not the top. I've only, only got people who are like 8,000, even 10,000 hours. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so let's actually jump in to something that some of you guys may have seen some years ago. We're going to have a look at the very first playable version of Space Engineers. This is like, this wasn't released, but this was kind of the the dev side of things. So I'm going to load this up here. Let's see. Let's just make sure it will load. Here we go. Oh, it's already loaded in. And I wonder, I wonder when was the last time Marek saw this. This should be good. Let's bring up the game capture. Oh, hello. Sandbox, there we go. Hope that's gonna work. And here we go. So, you know what, I'm, I'm not actually, okay. So the date that this was, oh, that was 2016. So I don't know when exactly this was created, but this is the oldest version of Space Engineers that I could find. Um, do you remember this, Marek? Yes, yes. Uh, this was probably in in probably May or June or July 2013. Few oh. months. I mean, not probably few, more like four months before we launched the game. And uh, yeah, because it still has the minor wars, GUI and, and everything. And actually, if you look uh, on the background, uh, you will see some moving ships in the background. For example, now there is one gel. Oh, yeah, yeah. The the, the the black items like the kind of things moving the background because the skybox is animated right yeah, yeah and if i remember correctly they they are probably only in the skybox so you you cannot get closer to them and also the explosions yeah i uh, saw the little explosions happening uh, yeah, so those are the things from minor wars and also the the, the skybox obviously is from minor wars and uh, so this was the first experiment we can play with uh, with this prototype jewel if you want so i will remember what exactly what features were in. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the keybinds because I, 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 I have played this in the past. We can see the original cockpit and thrusters here and the of, of course they're placeholder and untextured, but we can still see the rough size, the rough shape, the, the kind of the core ideas and the, the thrusters, for example, are still the same dimensions as they ended up being. We have this kind of interesting texture as well here with like the handles as well. I'm not sure if this was, was this also a placeholder? Is this, was this a texture used in Minor Wars? I can't remember, honestly. This was for, for Space Engineers, definitely. Okay. And it was, it's interesting that there are these handles and later we probably decided to not have them because, you know, there will be collision with the feet of the, of the engineer with his boots. And, but I remember one of these, uh, like texture prototypes this was probably the, the first one because one thing that we needed to solve is the tileability or repeatability of the armor texture because we didn't want it to look you know like a tile tiled texture mm -hmm. so uh and this one actually if you can drill zoom out a little bit okay i will see so this probably doesn't have the the tiling trick that we know use later this is really repeatable even though it's not so visible it's actually quite good but uh yeah it, it's not using this kind of like you know pattern tiling 
And is it possible to spawn the engineer here? It should be, it should be, but I'm trying to remember how because I'm pressing all the buttons here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go, look, look. And this was the, the placeholder engineer as well. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. And we got it. I think we bought it from some asset store or something like that. <laughs> the original space engineers. <laughs> I think I spawned in a couple here. How do I, let's see if I can, uh, yeah, I'm trying to see if I can spin around here. Because I know you can fly in the ship as well, but oh, we go. Oh, press space to enter the cockpit here. Ah, here we go. Okay, press enter to start the engines. Oh, I jumped out. I uh, press space, that's why. And there you go. I'm actually flying the first space engineer ship here. <laughs> oh, there we go. We have, we have spectator mode still. So we can actually see. Oh. Oh, there we go. We've got third person. Hey, there you go. Third person as well. <laughs> so, I mean, to be fair, the thruster effect is very familiar, actually. I would love to know exactly when this build was actually made. Like, what this, what, like, what month this build is from. You, you said roughly, did you, what did you say? Did you say, like, April, I think you said? Or was I imagining that? I can't remember. Mm. Or maybe June or July, okay. like that. Because I think that in the summer we already started to prepare for the release, and the release was in uh, in October, or, or no November, right? November. So uh, release end of well, release was uh, today. Oh, okay, <laughs> today, yeah. yeah. And now it's still October. Okay. So so in October. So uh, I think it must have been some sometime in June. Well, that's actually, to, for, to go from, from here in June to October, that's actually quite rapid development, actually. Because yeah, I feel yeah. like there's, there's a, lot of the, a lot of the things that were in the 2013 build, which we're actually going to have a look at and again in a second. Sorry, I mean the release build. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it still feels like there's quite a lot of features uh, that aren't there yet. Because there, there there, there's not even a UI, I don't think, yet, from what I can tell. So... And also, probably not the destruction. I don't think there is the destruction and the bending of the of the armor in this version. And I don't think I have any way. I can try crashing the ship into the into mm -hmm. the. Let's have a look then. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Although even here, like the the speed of the uh, the crafts was obviously quite limited. Like this is the. I don't I don't seem to be accelerating any deep any more than this. We probably don't even have the velocity to even if we could here, but we'll try. What do you guys think of this then? Who's put an 07 in the chat if you're seeing this for the first time? You're seeing the, the yeah, the, 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 the real history of space engineers. Because I know this is, we've definitely shown this at some point. I don't know how many years ago now, but we sometimes get it out for a, so wow. So a lot of people are seeing this for the first time. <laughs> That's cool. That's really great to see. Well, I'm really happy we could, we could, uh, we could share this, share some of the history. And then you look at this, and then you look at Space Engineers today, right? And, I mean, I think the only blocks in the game... There wasn't even gyroscopes, I don't think. It, it looks like the only blocks were the thrusters and the, the cockpit. Like, there might be... And the armor blocks. There's some armor blocks in here. Which actually have some damage on them. I'm not sure if that's just, like, uh, that was just the way they were. They, they seem to all be have the same damage here. So... And... Also, still at this point, the team was just composed of maybe four people, Marek, at this point, do you think, still? Or was it, was it like five or six at that point? Um, it was Petr, Andrei, Tomáš. And uh, I think that, that's all from the programmers. Okay, from the programmer side. And, and designers, because Tomáš, Tomáš was doing the design and, and 3D art. Yeah, I remember, I know Tomáš was always was, was managing quite a lot of, like, he, he did the art for quite a while, actually. I don't know... When was the first kind of dedicated uh, kind of art team when that kind of formed? But I know for a, for a long time, Tom Ash did all the uh, all the kind of initial art for the game. So I think some players are asking for this skin as a like the retro space engineer skin or something. Like it'd be interesting to see this skin, but with the tiling effect, right? Because obviously this doesn't have the tiling tech in it, but it's it's a pretty interesting skin with the handles. So. What do you guys think? Would you would you like to use this on your 2022 ships? It is interesting, actually. It's kind of uh, this is on the flat surface here, but like on a. Because you know maybe you can you know this this probably this doesn't have any uh, 
This doesn't have a lot of the, this is the uh, DirectX 9 as well. So this of course does not have a lot of the render tech that we, car we currently use, but at least the, the, raw, the raw texture idea behind it. Yes, yes. I think the skin looks quite dope. Well, there you go, Marek. Some, maybe another idea to, to get down. Some people are kind of digging this, um, this never seen before uh, skin here, <laughs> armor skin. Cool, cool. Super. Well, that's that's it is about it, I think. Like I was spamming all the buttons. I don't think we have any more features to show in this particular build, but I wanted to show this off because this is the really the oldest form of space engineers that we could possibly show today. Uh, maybe somewhere there could be some more intermediate between minor wars and space engineers. Because this was actually, you know, the the minor wars twenty eighty one sandbox was that. W was it planning to be called that, Marek, at some point? And then was the name Space Engineers then, like, or was it always going to be Space Engineers, if you see what I mean? Was it at some point, was it going to be the sandbox of Minor Wars? Mm. Good question. I, I truly cannot remember. Okay. Um, maybe we just slept there, the sandbox, you know, uh, on top of it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, because also a lot of the code, the namespaces contain the sandbox, maybe even until these days. So just to like distinguish it from minor wars. Okay. Well, it's, um, it, it definitely, it, it, re it really is interesting though. And uh, I know like, I don't know when the decision was made. Like, uh, do, you, do you remember the, the time when you were working minor wars and you were like okay guys let's make a sandbox like do you remember like do you remember that meeting or was it kind of was it a bit hazy probably like it was some experimentation maybe and then you kind of jumped on it it definitely wasn't during the minor wars time because during that we were focusing only on minor wars but when minor wars was out uh, we started to think uh, about what's next and then i uh, remembered that the original vision of all this was actually engineering sandbox with physics and uh, even minor wars was for me just like one step in that vision and uh, so then uh, when we were free from minor wars we could start thinking about what's next and so i came back to this idea you know like lego technique in space or just lego technique and we started to think about it and, and work on it and in the beginning, it actually seemed quite unreal to make something like, you know, like you build from blocks and it actually physically works. But at the time, this wasn't really something usual. And But we were thinking about how to solve the various problems, you know, with the deformation and with the physics. And even actually having a physics engine that can handle something like this is, is not trivial. So, uh, but more and more we, we spent time thinking about this it was more and more clear that we can actually do it you know and it, it's not a project for 20 years uh, before we release something but probably a couple of months uh, to see playable prototype and have players play it and and be happy and then together with the community start developing it so so to sum it up uh, basically after minor wars we started to think about the next project we remembered uh, my original vision with uh, engineering and physical sandbox and we just had to figure out how to solve those individual issues and uh, then we did and then of course there was m many choices like what should be the size of the blocks because in my original vision i was thinking about 10 centimeter blocks basically okay yeah but, that was that's uh, how you started which which is would be really yeah really quite a small size yeah, yeah. but uh, we were also considering the performance and everything. So we had to consider all these uh, possible parameters of this problem. And uh, actually, I'm quite lucky that we decided uh, for not 10 centimeter blocks, but for larger, half meter and two and a half meter, because they make the building of the ships much faster and much easier. You know, like 10 centimeter would be just some kind of micromanagement. So, uh, yeah, then there are these choices. And even, for example, funny thing is that I, I still remember we were thinking that when you build a ship, 
uh, and it, it is a grid, where should be the inventory of this of this grid? Like, should it be some abstract uh, property of the grid or how to solve it? And then we realized that it's actually a volumetric grid, so the inventory should be some block somewhere in that grid, you know, and if it is destroyed, then it lost your inventory. So that's how we came up with cargo containers. And, and there were many things like this. That's, I think, when we also had this company motto, like, uh, reality is the best game designer. And because when we didn't know how to decide or we we're not sure, then we said like, okay, so how would this thing work in reality? And that usually led us to the right way. Yeah, so that's that. Super. That Well, that's, that's, that's really, really great to hear about, again, like how those, how it basically, how the inception, how it came to be, right? Amazing. And I think touching on that, we actually, I'm now going to put on, so on, on screen some never seen before pictures. Uh, well, I guess we'll start with, this was the oldest pictures that I could find. Checking the date on these images. It's actually, this was, uh, I think even in 2011. So this would have been like the very first kind of keen software house offices. So you guys ready for this? <laughs> Let me just see if I got them all added here. Hold on. I'm gonna, for some reason the name didn't work. Let me just remove those again and re-add them. Because I, I really wanted to find something today that you guys have never seen before from the history of SE. And th this seemed like a, a pretty good one here. So if I uh, stop that, and then if I bring this up, here we go. Is gonna work here. Oh, where is it? Didn't come up. Restart. Oh, it's all <laughs> stretched here. Wait, let's uh, transform, reset, reset, transform. Let's try that again. Oh, that's really big now. Okay, let me just quickly resize this. So this is Marek. <laughs> there he is, Marek in 2011. And this was an office, this was a, an apartment somewhere in Prague, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in Prague seats. Actually, we were there for a couple of years. <laughs> Let's just... and, and this was when there was how many of you? There was, this is when there was three or four of you, right? I think this was before Space Engineers. This was during the, the beginning of the Minor Wars, probably few, first few months of Minor Wars. <laughs> It was already maybe 10 people in the team or something like that. Super here. I'm just going to skip through. So that's the first one we got. Let's have a little look at this office number one then. I have the same floor in my apartment. There you go. <laughs> I love the, 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 the typical, the classic like box on the floor as a desk option. I don't know who's, I don't know who's, I don't know, don't know whose desk that is, but I oh, know that was just I that was just next to you. Okay, I see. Wow. Yeah, this must be some real nostalgia for you here. <laughs> I remember that light, that light at the back. I remember that light being in our offices in the last offices actually. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, it actually, was... I think it's probably still somewhere here. It's 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 around somewhere, I think. Yes, you. Yes. Living in Prague, Prague six. I said, wait, this is. Okay, okay. This this was I think I, no, this is the same office that. Okay, I understand now. So, this was the first kind of again all part of the history of space engineers. Without this office somewhere in uh, you know apartment in Prague, this is where you know SE SE's journey began before it was even SE, right? So that was the <laughs> first one I have here. But yeah, it's, it's just, thank you so much for finding these, Marek. Let's let's see. So that was the first one we had, and then we have. This is when the team is growing a bit, right? These are the first ones. And then we um, have... Um, by the way, on the, on the photo... Okay, let me not, just... It's, it's not me in the underwear. It's me in the, like, in the shorts. <laughs> There's some... Okay, so what, there's some people thinking that in the chat. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> look, Marek was a sporty guy. Look, look he's, just, he's, he's just having a great time. He probably, you know, was cycling or something and came to work in Minor Wars. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, the memes are going to be glorious, Marek. <laughs> so let's uh, let's have a look at the next ones, which again shows the growth again of the of the company here. Because the next, but the next pictures, the team had grown quite a bit. This was still before Space Engineers, but it looks like from the pictures, it looks like there's more like 
Is it, is it maybe more people here? Let's have a look. Uh, we're going to get these up. Let's see if this is going to be good. Hey, oh, they're smaller pictures, are they? So this was this this isn't the same apartment, right? Uh, it is. Uh, okay, let me think. Or is this in the one down the road at David's? Like the one further, the one that I visited. Okay. I, I can't remember. Uh, no, it wouldn't have been. It, it cannot be. This is really minor old times. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, it's just I think the not the same room when I was. It's the room next to it. Okay. Got rooms. Is it's got pictures? Of, actually, I remember that sofa. <laughs> I remember this sofa actually, because I, I think I stayed here when I when I first moved to Prague. Probably right. I would have. I think that was the. Yeah, I think we were using the like later. We were using the flat for people. Yeah. <laughs> the toilet. The toilet. The key. <laughs> <laughs> this is how the, the this is how the this is where the guys brush their teeth and. <laughs> wow! Look at this. This um. This is still ah, that's Petter. That's no way. This is that's uh, Petter Minerjik. And you guys might remember Petter. He did the water stream, not too long ago. But Petter was OG, OG, uh, OG Keen right there. It looks like working on some voxel stuff, working on asteroids maybe. But minor wars asteroids. And uh, and a bunch of Rolik. <laughs> a bunch of Rolik. That's typical Czech. Typical Czech. Got to have your Rolik, right? But it looks like at this point you've upgraded, Marek. You've got you've got you've got like a, a bit of a fancier desk now. You know, seems like from the last picture the setup's gone up a bit. And also pants. <laughs> and also <laughs> pants upgrade. You know, like you know, like you know when you start out in like some games and you have like the the base character and he has like kind of like uh, very simple clothing and stuff and then you kind of like level up and stuff and you on your quest you kind of get more clothing. I don't know. I always think of if that's what it feels like. It feels like you've kind of like you've gone on some quests and now you've upgraded your. You've been looting. Well, not looting, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Super. Wow. Yeah, this is it. Oh, I can see some in the background. The left. It looks like there's some wep. They're working on some weapons. I guess some minor wars still, right? So. Some shoes. Yeah, we got some classic shoes. The sandals, the, the the classic. I think that have we back to the start yet? This is still. I can still. I can see the minor war ships on the screen actually. And there's Marek. How, so I'm trying to work how this is. So this was really. Uh, this was probably twelve. No, eleven years ago now. Looking very in thought here, Marek. Like thinking, hmm. Already somewhere in that head, you you had space engineers in there. You were still thinking. <laughs> I remember this. Oh, I remember this place because I stayed there now, and I just—it's—it's it's actually, it's a bit—it's a bit of nostalgia for me actually because it was the first place I stayed in Czech Republic. Walking in, there's actually quite a lot of people at this point because there's multiple rooms of people. It looks like you might have had like ten or twelve people, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Drip engineers. <laughs> Coffola. There's, there's definitely. I feel like you can look at these pictures. I feel like there's definitely a lot of evidence that this is a Czech, a Czech studio, right? Coffola, mm. Rolik. This kind of like this, this like typical wooden floor that I have in my apartment. <laughs> Still, you know, it's like. There we go. Back to the start again. So this is, uh, again, some more of the history that you know never seen before by the community. So you guys can see a little bit behind of what was going on. And there's one last folder, and I think these are just some, I think they're headshots of you, Marek. A younger Marek here. This was in 2012, I think. This was, uh, here we go. I think, interesting. So between 2012, 11 and 2012, you you really grew the hair out, Marek, then. Look, that's, that, that was, uh, that was like, I think it was about one year difference. Mm -hmm. There we go. There's the, the but but the, the but the classic pose as well though. Like the, the the profile picture that you have now, it's it definitely was being practiced the years previous, right? And the and the shirt that I have there, you know, yeah. the blue or the with the, the stripes, I still have it. And actually, I have it since I don't like I was thirteen year old, something like that. Really? And, still and still wearing and, it? Still good? 
I st I'm still wearing it and uh, it's still working like it didn't tear down which is pretty amazing right because other things wouldn't survive a year but this shirt for some reason is is like it's probably some magic shirt you know good quality obviously good quality stuff that's it there you go and it's just some communist shirt you know because <laughs> on those times so it's not like proper capitalistic shirt but like communist style and it's still <clears throat> working well well they, they obviously got some things right there there we go that's that's and that, there we go. i think that i think that's the there we go there's the final pictures so as i said a bit of history of keen and a bit of history of marrick as well going through the various hairstyles there <laughs> i think when i met you i no you i think you had short hair by the time i met you in 20 i met you in 2015 for the first time no 2014 for the first time i met you i think you had short hair at that point so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And leading on to that, so this was a little bit before uh, SE was released. And now we're going to load up here. We're, we're kind of be moving forward in history as well. We're now going to kind of jump in really quick to the uh, the 2013 build of Space Engineers. But um, yeah, Mark, don't be surprised if there's some new memes appearing on the internet over the in the coming days. <laughs> um, let's just load this up here. That was really great to see, though, because I say I've I feel like I've seen some of them before, like one or two of those that you may have shared somewhere. But I don't remember seeing um, a lot like a lot of them were, was also my first time seeing them there. I think let's just find this. I got to go. Uh -huh. oh, actually, while I'm waiting, guys, we're going to do a giveaway. We're going to do a raffle for the to celebrate the ninth anniversary. And I couldn't think how to do this on both Twitch and YouTube at the same time. So we've got, we've created a Gleam raffle. And we're going to be selecting some people who will be winning either Game Keys or Ultimate Edition or uh, some merch, uh, uh, merch coupons so you can get your own Space Engineers t-shirts and stuff. So did you guys, you guys want a raffle? Let's get this going here. I was going to do individually Twitch and YouTube, but that will get messy. So I'll just share this Gleam raffle here. And we'll leave this open for a little bit here. We'll, I, I will probably draw the winners maybe on the next, uh, one of the next coming uh, Keen streams, I think. Okay. Let's have a look. So uh, that should be good. All right, guys. So you can head to Gleam and the more things you interact with, and most of you are probably already part of our community pages already, but if you're not, it's an opportunity to do that and get more entries. Increase your chance to uh, to get some SE, SE keys and some SE swag. Would love a Keen Software House shirt. We got some really cool, even, I don't know when were the last ones we added, but we added some... Uh, some of the I actually have quite a lot of kind of space engineers shirts, but there's some ones on there that um, are newer, which should are really cool actually. So that's that. So you guys can head over there and uh, take a look at the giveaway we're doing today for the ninth anniversary. I'm all, just trying to find this file here. Uh, 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 should have bookmarked this. One of the things I want to talk about, uh, we want to talk about today, we are going to talk about the future of SE as well a little bit. I know some people are asking, update, 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 so we'll get to that in just a little bit. Trying to go chronologically here in, in, a, in a way. Um, I also want to touch on the 10th anniversary. I know it might seem a bit early, but of course, next year will be a whole decade of Space Engineers. And we're hoping it's going to be the uh, the biggest party yet. So we'll, we'll, we'll kind of touch on that a little, in a little bit as well. Let me just get this up. I think we'll look at this build and then we will... Uh, we, yeah, we've got to actually... Time is flying here. Let's just load this up then. Let's go for this. Can I do three entries? Uh... 
There were some people asking about uh, plushies, Marek. I see plushies and I see 3D prints. I don't know if we have anything else to share at this point other than the fact that we hear you. You know, I'm not sure if you want to add anything to that, Marek, that we can add this time. Well, we are working on the, on the statue, you know, as, as we have shown a couple of times. And uh, so that will be launching soon. And uh, it looks beautiful. I can actually bring uh, one and, and show it. So just one yeah. second. Okay, let's, let's go for it. Do you need your full name? You shouldn't do. Let me, uh, it, was, it was a rapid setup here because I was hoping I could use a chat for the giveaway. You shouldn't need to put your, your name in it. So it uh, here's the one second. Let me see if I can. Okay, let me, let me, I'm going to, wait a minute. What I'm going to do, Marek, I'm going to make your screen bigger here, I think. And so this is the one made by Rastko. And there is also this, can, this stand to it. Do I have a, I wonder if I have a picture of that as well, actually, somewhere that you sent, like, uh, that you sent me here. Yeah, I think we are like this. So I think we are releasing the, the video that Rastko made. And uh, showing uh, showing the engineer. So this is going pretty well. Uh, they are printing it and painting, and uh, now they are preparing the packaging. So this will be available soon. So there's something to keep an eye out. Like if you guys remember that really, yeah, this really cool um, model of the engineer. We're figuring out how to to be able to this, so you guys can get these, and. Also, with the plushies, it's also something that we, we would like to do because, of course, we know how well the the first one did. I'm not sure how many people feel like they... Here's a question then. I'm gonna Just let, let me know in the chat, like, put an 07 down. How many people kind of feel like they missed out on the last plushies, like they didn't get them or they wish they had got them? Because it was open for quite a while, but I feel like... Um, people are really want those plushies. I'm not sure if these are... I don't know if these are players who already have the first version and would like more plushies or if it's the fact that people miss the first plushie and would like the opportunity to get that. Let's see. It's interesting actually, Marek. So there's actually a fair number of people who actually missed out on the first plushie. And mm -hmm. um, there you go. I have a lack of SE plushies in my life. <laughs> I'm a sucker for, my, for multiple plushies. Can't wait to design a 3D print a possible figure. Right, let's have a look here. So I have the original release version of the game here, guys. So this is something that um, some of you may have played already and some of you may have not, but let's see if I get this up. Another blast in the past here. Okay, gonna get this up. Let's see if this works. All right, and here we are. I, I like the idea of Marek Plashi. Maybe we should try it. <laughs> with, the, with the Roman armor attachment. Yeah, or, or just like, let, let's see how the Plashi people would uh, portray me, you know. <laughs> I, really, I, I'm really interested. It would be interesting. It'd be an interesting test. I mean, we, I feel like... It's funny because we have these plushies coming out that are kind of like the keen. You know, we have like this this plushie, and we can definitely do more of them. But it's um, it's interesting because the way we're doing it, it's kind of limited. Oh, ah, my cat's here and just did something. <laughs> okay, give me a second, guys. Hold on. Wait. Okay, Django is terrorizing the stream setup. Yes. There we go. Nice. Okay. Just craving a little bit of stream stream time. <laughs> Let's try that again. What do you do? I just old tab somehow. Okay. Oh, uh, sorry. You were yeah, and the the, the the plushies, but it's um. It's kind of, it can be quite hard because they're always done in like limited runs. So you have like, 
uh, as the way it is right now, it's like you get one chance to get them and then that's it. Um, I'm not sure if that's a way that we should like keep it going or if like if we can figure out a way to just have like all the plushies we have like somehow available permanently. I, I, I don't know because the way we're doing it, we're working with Makeship and that is the standard way they do things. They they have they have like a, it's almost like a, a kind of Kickstarter style run of them and then that's it. Uh, but clearly people missed out. Clearly people missed out on the first batch and uh, are interested. So this version we're looking at right now, this is the 2013 version of the game. And we're going to have a quick jump in. No more Minor Wars sandbox. This is definitely Space Engineers now. And let's go into... Okay, well, we're going to skip the tutorial. I think I know how to play the game. Maybe. And custom world screen. This is all we have. We've got... Easy Start 1, Easy Start 2, Survival, which I don't think actually is Survival because Survival wasn't in yet. I think this was just like, uh, I don't know what this was actually, but it wasn't Survival because we didn't have it. And then there's an empty world here. So we'll jump on, I think we'll jump on Easy Start 2. Maybe 1, hmm, let me think. Maybe 1 actually, just for the sake of it. And we'll call this ninth. I'm actually interested what is the Easy Start 2 and Survival because Cannot remember. Oh, Easy Start 2 is the green station, Marek. Okay. Oh, you know, okay. The biggest station. Easy Start 1 is just a platform on the red ship. Survival, I don't know. Maybe we can have a look in a second here. Mm -hmm. So we're loading up. Remember this UI? Yeah, remember this UI? Yeah, yeah. it was uh, like clean and simple. <laughs> clean and simple. And here we go. Look at that. We're in. This was before the engineer had an, I just noticed the first, had a, a diagonal running animation. So you got F1 for help and hints. I think we can probably hide these. Me, I gotta hide these here. I think in, in the game options. Yeah, yeah, but this, and the, the game options was just this. This is all we had. English, language, control hints. Yeah, the, uh, the, the options were, was very minimalistic back then. And here it is. If we open the G screen, we're greeted with some blocks. And this was, it was very easy to find blocks back then. We had um, the armor blocks. We had a couple of interior blocks, um, power blocks, you know, reactors, thrusters. And a lot of these didn't actually function yet, right? So the car containers, I think may have, but the, the refineries and the weapons were just placeholder. And we even had this explosive cube block and these for a while at least were just kind of um things that would like be kind of de decorative they didn't actually have a function yet and we had the new small ship large ship new station okay so also the classic skybox marrick not animated like the minor wars one but we had the same thing where there was like the asteroids in the distance and how many of you guys in the chat, be honest, tried to fly to the asteroids in the skybox at least once? <laughs> because I, I feel like I feel like I feel like most of us did. And to be fair, it looks cool with the it, it does look cool, but it's just I think as the game world, especially as the game world grew, and we actually ended up having like infinite, almost infinite planet, uh, you know, world sizes. I don't, see, I don't know when it actually... Do you remember when we removed the uh, the asteroids from the skybox, Marek? Uh, I, I don't know exactly when. Maybe maybe with planets. Because it would kind of make sense. You know, because we needed a clean skybox. I don't remember. Maybe someone in chat knows better. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm pressing F to enter. But back then, it was I believe it was T. Yeah, it was T to enter cockpits. I have to admit, I still there's I still really like the the flames of DX9. I don't know what it is. Maybe they're just brighter, I guess. So we're flying around here. We have landing gear on the bottom. Of course, all the blocks you see are also they all got upgraded in terms of their visuals here. Some some were some had textures, some were actually either untextured or had a very <coughs> a very plain uh, kind of metallic texture to them. Oh, your keybind's still T. So you, did you change your keybind to keep it with the original interact? Interesting. Okay. 
just see here. Oh, uh, okay. We didn't have full screen windowed mode back then. It's just full screen or okay. It's just it's not freezing. That's just me alt tabbing. No alt tabbing allowed. And let's actually walk inside the red ship here as well because I think this will also be kind of uh, eye opening in terms of how many blocks we had. I mean, you saw the G screen, but in, again, in terms, you guys know how detailed and, and decorated the entire inside the ships can be now. So let's have a little look here. Also, Marek, this was when jet, uh, jetpack was limited to 5.7 meters per second. So this was the fastest you could move a jetpack. And again, I, I know the, the idea was, of course, was that you wouldn't use a jetpack that much. You would use the jetpack to kind of get to your ships and then you would use the small ships um, to travel short distances and then the bigger ships for traveling long distances, right? Um, and I, I think, do you remember what, was there, was, there, was there like one reason why we changed it to have unlimited speed or was it um, a multiple of factors that we were having issues with and it kind of made more sense to have higher speed? I'm not sure if you remember this. You mean why we went from slow speed to high speed? Yeah, with the jetpack. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think I I wanted like more um, more faster gameplay, basically. Okay. Not, not like this slow movement where you need to wait and you're kind of bored while your body flies somewhere. And obviously, oh, that was the other problem is catching up with your ship, right? If you fell out of your ship, yeah, yeah. it would be gone thing. forever. It would just be gone forever. Unless you were somehow had another ship that you could catch up to it. But if you had a ship, one of, you had a small ship going at max speed, there would be no chance to catch it. So that's also probably <laughs> also another reason here. This is also before Ragdoll as well, of course. Did we have, could you change your, uh, could you change, how did you change your engine this? Your engine, was it in here? This was, this was the medical room. I guess you couldn't change your engineer color either because the, the med medical room didn't have uh, interaction point just the just one for healing because yeah. let's have a quick run inside then I turn the lights on ah yes this is a very very familiar interior no doors no glass i think the interior kind of consisted of lights and you had interior lights and ramps no two by ones, of course, just ramps. And even here, we have a little problem here, it seems. Gotta fly over that. And reactors. So it's just, yeah, it really is. And, but we love this game. Even back then, that was the point. Like, I think in our heads, we had this idea of how detailed things could be, but it didn't really matter. Like, we were just so happy to have this, just, just to be able to build the ships as they were without all the kind of like detailed interiors that we have now. This was just, this was still like revolutionary in terms of, um, in terms of what we could do. Well, yeah, actually it's funny you mentioned that Kel, I would like to do a retrofit contest for some of these older builds in the 22, as you guys may know, we did one for that, the, the white ship that I released recently. And that was kind of a kind of a casual fun competition, but it worked out really well and it was really interesting to see how people approach the same build differently. So 100%, I would love to do something like that, like take a ship like this. We already have our own version made by our designers, but in general, take some of these older builds and then reimagine them with all the blocks and skins and, me and mechanics that we have today. So there actually was no other floor. This was the only interior. We couldn't even go up at this point. This was it. We could enter this ship and now we're flying the red ship, but there was no there was no front glass cockpit. This was this was it. It still looks great though. That's one thing, Marek. Like, even though this is the 2013 version of the game, and we don't have some of those fancy tech things, PBR, all that stuff, it still looks really cool. <laughs> it still looks great, you know. So and I think that was the other thing as well, like when it came out, like it was, it obviously was a sandbox, sand, sandbox, sandbox block based game, but the ships could still look magnificent, you know? Right, we're gonna do it. We're gonna, we're gonna do the classic RAM. It wouldn't be, we wouldn't be doing justice without doing a classic red on blue RAM here for the anniversary.
Uh, I have to admit, I'm still reading some of the comments here. I'm very distracted by this 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 old build here. I mean, Marek, I'm just thinking what we could do is here while I set this up. Um, did, did you want to cover maybe one of the other points in the, in the that we that we have planned? Let's have a look there. There's, there's quite. A, I think we still have quite a bit to to go through actually. Always mm. rely. Let's have a look. Sorry, I just didn't want to alt tab here because let me just okay. Write some notes. Okay. Well, in fact, just because it's it's, it's kind of unrelated, let's. Uh, I guess I will. I'll, I'll do this this crash, and I think we can probably move on here. Um, but in general, you had some of the, 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 the first few updates, the first few updates, right? And some of those included things like the landing gear, because I think I don't think the landing gear was even functional in the in the game mode I have right now. So that was one of those things that was added. And I don't know, maybe here's a question then. Like I'm thinking from those early updates, what for you was one of like the, the coolest blocks that that you implemented earlier on? Uh, magnetic landing gears was very cool because it enabled uh, a small ship to you know connect to the large ship and then fly without just like being lost and this this felt really good because it was the first interaction between different grids in some sense like other than destruction so uh, magnet, magnetic landing gear was, was great and i don't know when i think rotors wasn't that I mean, it was it was relatively early on. Honestly, it was yes. it was it was. I'm just checking checking the list, and I'm it, it was probably two months because we were doing one one update per uh, or each week. There was a new update, and so only a few updates later, there was a 64-bit version, which is kind of funny, you know. But uh, the original version of the game was only 32-bit, so uh, it has limited memory. And then you couldn't build large things. So that's why we quickly uh, adapted the game to 64-bit. It's quite funny because these days it's quite normal to have 64-bit application by default, but back then it wasn't actually. It was a big deal. It was a massive deal because in, in terms of what the amount of stuff you could have in the game, it was yeah. quite a big upgrade, wasn't it? Yes, yes, it, it was, it was. I think and... like we had like we had articles covered, like Space Engineers goes 64-bit. Like it was, it was quite a, it was quite a big upgrade. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And I don't even know what was the challenge. Uh, maybe the version of DirectX or maybe the version of Havoc. Something like this was the, the main issue. Because otherwise you just switch the switch the type of the build in a Visual Studio. But this was a big thing for us. And uh, the, and we also did the large and small rotor in that update. So that was basically eight years ago. Wow. Eight years. So that that was a big one, and I guess that was. <laughs> you you could say that was the day that Clang was born, but <laughs> where would we be without Clang, guys? Such a <laughs> such a community. How to word it? Um, the, the arch nemesis, you know, was 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 created. But Mar also, Marek, just looking at this destruction, you know, like that was something that we've always had, and this looks great. Like this defamation looks so good. And I think this was also for many players when they saw this in the trailers was just absolutely mind blowing mm -hmm. to see the ships break apart in unique ways every time. Look at that. So before the, the rotor, we got the hand drill and uh, the hand drill and the small ship drill. And uh, before that, we got the beacon block and copy, paste, and delete. I, I guess this was probably copy, paste, and delete for the creative mode. I mean, there was only creative mode actually back then. But and still, that was a big deal to be able to, to rapidly copy things. So something, it, it seems right, it's so simple as copy and paste. But it, of course, when that first dropped on a Thursday, like I never forget, I was always racing home from college to, to check out the latest update. And it was like copy and paste. That's amazing. <laughs> and uh, after that, 
after that, there was advanced rotor settings, and then there was warhead, and then there was small ship gatling gun and rocket launcher, because those things seemed quite like easy to do and, uh, and larger improvements, you know, like people can just play more. And then there was a refinery and assembler, then uh, functional doors, that's interesting. Was and then there was multiplayer, the first multiplayer. It was probably a few months after the, the, the launch. And I think multiplayer was, I think like all of these things obviously were generating hype because the, you know, the, as we had more updates coming out, it was like, wow, okay, this is a really cool development process. Like every week, there's a new, a new feature, a new block. It was so exciting to follow along. And it really was that like, that, that excitement of every week, not knowing what was going to be added. But at the same time, I think multiplayer, of some, like multiplayer and survival were those two big boosts that kind of brought a lot of new people to the game when they first dropped, right? Because these were big reasons, because as soon as it was multiplayer, people were like, Hey, I'm playing this game, come play with me. And then people obviously from the very release day had been asking for survival mode to, you know, be able to um, have a more kind of immersive experience, uh, 100%. So there we go. So th then after multiplayer, it was multiplayer chat and heavy armor and uh, ammo models and items. Then there was custom colors. Yeah, that's interesting because until then we had only the palette of the basic eight or, or nine or so colors, you know, like what I used to call Lego colors because they're basically the same colors that the Lego you, blocks have. You can see it on my toolbar here, on my toolbar right now, Marek. We know we have that screen now when you press P. Right now, I just pressed, I just, uh, pressed the bracket keys and that's all I've got. I've got yellow, blue, green, black, white, gray, red. And back to the start again. That was it. So you were just so you were just switching with the arrow keys, and that were your only choices. Crazy. But I think this was good because uh, it was less choices, but it means that the the builds, the ships, had more compatible colors. So uh, you know somehow it just felt more more better to me. And uh, then there was gravity generator range settings. So yeah, so the gravity generators were there from the beginning. Yes, yes, for the especially for the gameplay point of view, needing to be able to stand on. I think that well, yeah, they were also there from the first build as well. So. And the next build was about player name tag, probably multiplayer. Mm -hmm. Then tabled headbob, and then this is funny synchronization of inventory in multiplayer. So it's you know like until this that moment we didn't have synchronization of inventory. <laughs> So it was like multiplayer where some things work, something just don't, because they are not implemented. That's correct. Oh, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> again, these things are just like so many of these things are just like things that we say take for granted, but you know what I mean. Like we just expect them to be there. But this was every week. You guys were making a new build. You were iterating upon. Um, oh, apparently. Okay, that's strange. Apparently, we're not playing Easy Start Two. And that was it. Like I think when multiplayer first dropped, you're right, there was no name tag. So you just had a bunch of engineers running around, but you had no idea who it was. And I don't know I don't even know if there was chat in the game, in game chat at that point. If it was just uh, there was, it was oh, okay. quite soon after the multiplayer. Then solar panels were added. Yeah, that's what I remember. And I think this was uh that yeah, it, this was the famous uh, update where we said like solar panels because you wanted them. <laughs> yes. Remember, that, that was really good because the community wanted the solar panels and we thought like it's actually not that hard to do them. So we did them. <laughs> solar panels were, yeah, for sure. And that, I think that was the start of many things that because obviously quite early on, players were, 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 were rapid in terms of requesting blocks and yeah, the, the solar panels was a big one because I think it was that first block that was not initially like in the roadmap, like in the in the planning. Like probably at some point it would have happened, but it was the first one where we were like, okay, players are really asking for solar panels. I think both from the functional point of view, but also from the visual 
uh, thing that they will bring. Uh, <clears throat> so, and then we had cargo ships, you know, those cargo ships that fly in the distance and, and you can attack them. Then we had the meteorites. Then we Armageddon, had... yeah. Armageddon. Then we had new glass with those blo window blocks and artificial mass block. And I think we added the artificial mass block because there was rotors, so people theoretically could do cars, but there was no planets, you know, only space, and the, gr the grids are not um, pulled by gravity. So, you know, like you cannot have a car without gravity. So that's why we added artificial uh, mass block and also new cockpits. Yeah, and that, there was a big thing. There was conveyor, collector and connector. So basically, we added the conveyor system. That was a massive deal because before then, it really was everything was done by hand, transported by hand. So yeah, in terms of like automation and efficiency, the the conveyors was was like a game changer in terms of time and survival, one hundred percent. Then uh, we added wheels, but these were very different wheels from what we have now. And it was only in space, of course, so you had to use them with artificial mass generators as well. Or, or people were using them for some kind of rail system. Yeah. And then turrets, decoys, and missile launchers. Then there was a large ship grinder added. And uh, what else? Missile turrets, ship gunfire mode. And what else? Small and large ship welders. Okay, new blocks and uh, small ship grinder. Then we added dedicated servers. It's interesting actually that, I, I don't even remember this, that probably didn't have dedicated servers. Actually, I kind of remember that we didn't have the support for dedicated servers until some time. Interesting. Then merge block and uh, yeah, conversion of station to ship. And yeah, this was the first time in jail when you can select a color of your space suit. And so it was it was really quite late. So it, I think until that point, did it randomize? It must have randomized in like a multiplayer. You just it, it was, you were just given a suit color, I think. Again, it's just, it's just all these th so, so many of these things. I forget that they weren't there for quite a while. And like now it's like, oh, that's these are these are almost basic low level things. But these were when these were coming out on a weekly basis. It was like, what? So guys, I'm also just preparing some stuff in the background here for, I know we've definitely got people uh, asking about the next update, right? Trying to, uh, and we're going to get to it. We are going to get to it, okay? I'm just seeing here. Uh, if you're joining us as well, we have the giveaway going as well. So uh, please do join that if you haven't yet. Get as many entries as you want. Uh, So many updates, Marek, right? Like it's it's hundreds at this point, hundreds of updates. And it's <laughs> time flies and it's, it's easy like looking back at it now, like, oh, we did this, we did this. But from like a week to week, month to month, or, or even day to day basis, this is like just so much work, so much planning, uh, iterating to get it here. That's what's, that's what's when it's, when it's kind of crazy looking back on some of this stuff is that like each one of these things had its own set of problems and challenges that we had to overcome to actually get it out and out for the players. Mm -hmm. So then there was large ship drills and spectator mode. I don't understand what this means because there must have been some kind of spectator mode from the beginning, but maybe in survival or something. I don't know, maybe possibly, possibly not. I don't know, surely the worst people were making video. Mm, I don't know, maybe more advanced. This might have been like a more advanced spectator or like the spectator tool possibly. And then uh, transmit electricity through rotors and new world settings. And banning players from dedicated servers. That's a good and... one to have. That's a good one to have for sure. Seeing... And it was fully functional conveyor connector system 
and custom astronaut suite color. So the fully functional Convert connector system, I cannot remember to be honest. How many years ago is this now? What do you know? Which which year? Where whereabouts are you now? It was basically almost a year after the first launch. So okay. Okay. 2014. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, 14. So I, I don't remember what was limited on the first Convert system version. Yeah, then we added factions and ownership of the blocks, then steering wheels and wheel controls. It's funny because until that update, we just had like non-steering wheels. <laughs> oh yeah, they were just spinning. Uh, you're right, oh, man. Yeah. So that, that was just for railing system. Then, then we added batteries and antenna communication, then pistons and blaster block. Interesting. Yeah, especially with the blaster block. So all of these, it's almost like all of these things are kind of coming back to you, Marek. Like, it's almost like some of these things, it's almost like, oh, wow, yeah, we added all these things, you know? Yes. And then there was block control for toolbar and weapons control for rotors. Yeah, I, I remember this one. It was good. I was really happy with this one that we kind of solved it so elegantly. Then... And this is interesting because there is a workshop modding, modding integration. So basically, we added the workshop almost a year after the launch. Just yeah. Kind of, because workshop was such an important thing for us. And and so I don't even remember how people share the the creation during this first year. Somehow I thought that we had the workshop integrated, like as one of the first things. It was it was on the it was just on the forums. People were sharing stuff on the forums, and there was a modding website for mods, and people were sharing mods just via file, basically mm -hmm. via like file sharing websites and stuff like that. There was a website. There used to be a website called SE Mods, I think, with a Z. Um, so yeah, it was it was a very, uh, I I love that era honestly because it was it was super obviously um, like the Steam Workshop opened up for way more people, but there was something really, I don't know how to word it. I guess just nostalgic thinking about like when people were like <laughs> on the forums and each each modder had their own like forum thread. They were talking about what they were working on. And it was really like, you had to kind of work a lot harder to get the stuff working and get the stuff into the game. <clears throat> and we've still got some modders in the chat right now who are modding as long as that. So, so then, then we had the Xbox announcement. This was really nice because this was played at um, Gamescom. And and then we released the Xbox version five or so years later. And then there was, we added remote terminal access, the, the button panel, mm -hmm. hard voices, and extended modding support. And it was about modding transparent materials. Then, uh, Spherical gravity generator. Yeah, I remember that one. Oh. Well, the video for that was crazy, I think, actually, if I remember rightly. This is a spherical gravity generator, even this day. It's one of those interesting blocks, but it's it's still like you have to really think of some interesting ways to use it because it's it's definitely like if you compare to the I feel like in terms of the uses of the of the standard one compared to the, the spherical one, that I saw the spherical one's probably like a couple of percent compared to like the, like the vast majority being the like i don't know um here's like how to word this to the to the chat like how often do you find yourself using the circle one and what for because it, it really has way more kind of niche uh use cases because the the standard one is just like you need it right for um you need it for just being we had to walk around a base and a ship kind of comfortably but um i'm just curious i use it to chuck rocks from under the base up over the, over to a collector oh that's kind of cool okay so yeah so for good for mining walking on an asteroid i guess you could have it like in the center of an asteroid and then you can like walk around the outside when I mean, you have the mag boots i guess i guess especially because mag boots weren't always a thing. I don't know when mag boots were added, but that would have been something. I'm just seeing here. I'm still prepping some stuff in the background. Let's see. What is the name of this? 
Her Death Star. Okay, let's put this in here. It's going to start attacking me, maybe. Maybe. No, not yet. Okay. On. Multitasking. Let's have a look. Oh, that's cool. Okay, this can work. Ah, this can work. Uh, what was next? Um, next was the camera block. Probably remote camera. I guess. Oh, being able <laughs> to like use a drone and then like I think look look in a camera from remote. Yeah, that that's. That's actually, again, some of these things are so... There's, if you had a look at all the features, we, like actual features of the game, I wonder how many there are. Like at this point, I feel like there's like, especially the smaller ones, I feel like there's really thousands, thousands of features. Like individual, you know what I mean? Like not like planets as a feature, but in terms of all the smaller things, because some of these updates were just like new settings for existing blocks. But still, this was something that would be really often game changing for the the uh, the block itself and would give whole new use cases here uh let's see uh, 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 uh. so then there was sensor block and flashlight lights then remote chip control and timer block so i think this was the times when we wanted to make things in se more programmable or basically enable players to not really do programming, but somehow programming, you know, triggering mm -hmm. things and events and so on. So then we added modding API. And uh, I think that was a big thing, actually. Then we actually explained how to do the mods. Uh, and uh, then we changed the G screen, which is funny because I think the first G screen was so good, so simple. <laughs> and then we added blueprints. That's interesting that we added them so late. Actually, oh, like the understand. blueprint, like, because I guess so. Was the workshop more for, more for mods? I don't know. Then that's interesting. I think the workshop was probably for the for the world. I think world was the first thing that we wanted on workshop, and and I think less important was modding of other you know type of mm -hmm, things like mm -hmm. models and so on. And I guess this is probably blueprints on workshop. Ah, possibly yes that that could be it then uh yeah then we added adding new asteroids in creative mode and then uh assembler cooperation what is that so yeah okay so a few assembler blocks somehow cooperating and then this is important is volumetric explosions so that the explosion takes into consideration the the volume of stuff it's kind of like damaging you know as the explosion expands so that if something is covered by armor it doesn't get destroyed until the armor is actually destroyed by that explosion or some other explosion so volumetric explosions it sounds like a normal thing these days but back then this was actually huge improvement for us or at least for, for us like we felt like we did something great then sound modding okay and uh, what else uh yeah then something with the, with the rotors blueprints in survival mode so this was for the projector block yeah yeah mm. so, beginning of the projector block and uh... where are we at now yeah, see then, him then we added sound block a new skybox so Joel maybe this is the moment when we change the skybox this was in no, well, I think that December two thousand fourteen. That might have been the blue skybox, mm -hmm. the, the the bluey one we have for a while, rather than the the, the <laughs> rather than the asteroids being removed. I can't remember. 
uh, yeah, and then we added the super large world. You know, and so that, that was uh, that obviously that, that was the infinite, near infinite size world, which is a big deal because I don't know how big they were before, like fifteen kilometers or something. And the weird thing would start to happen when you get to the edge of that world. I think, well, yeah. I, and yeah, I, that was the, the kind of procedural generation. I think, right? Well, it was because of the precision of the of numbers of the floating yes. point. And we were reaching the precision, like it was visible at, I think, 50 kilometers or something like that from the point zero. And so when we did the super large worlds, we basically cast, clustered the world into many clusters. Each of them is like independent island with its own origin. And uh, so you always need the position only relative to the position of this, um, of this cluster. And so this was good because it finally enabled really larger uh, worlds. Then there was programmable block, so like programming through C Sharp in game. Then there was... Uh, just ship max speed modding. Ah, being able to increase, yeah, wow. Because I guess that was hard coded before, so people could suddenly start driving like 300 meters per second or something, which is, or more or beyond. Yeah. Then there was GPS added, which is interesting. Because, yeah, probably because of these super large worlds, you know, that you, suddenly you couldn't find others so mm. easily. Then we added Voxel Hand, which is funny that we added it so late, because it was there from the beginning, in some sense. Because we had it in, in a minor wars. And uh, then uh, damage effect, camera zoom, tool shaking, then rounded armor block. This was probably the first iteration of rounded armor blocks, right? Because we are adding them. We, we, added, we added a bunch and I think we removed some as well, actually. Yeah, yeah. But I think we also will be adding some. At least that's what I saw in some of our uh, internal presentations. <laughs> okay, Marek leaks right there. Some new round blocks, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I actually have this prepared, Marek. Actually, we can, um, you know, we, we spoke before the stream about maybe showing some live demonstration. I have it prepared, so <laughs> I think we're good to go for, with this, actually. Well, maybe I will just finish, let's say, a uh, few, few updates and then... then okay, we can... mm -hmm. super. Then there was LCD panel, interesting. And again, different types of round armors. And some updates to mod API. Then we did uh, new armor blocks, new exploration ships, and history in the server browser. Then there was laser antenna and new turret modding. And what else? Oxygen. Okay, this is interesting. So this was the moment when we probably started to work on oxygen and air tightness. Mm -hmm. The first, <laughs> first that was obviously a big thing, right? Obviously having oxygen in the game. It was, it was, but it's interesting because I thought we had it much later with the planets. It, that's, that's what, it, some of these th features, it is actually surprising how early some of these things were. Like I agree, oxygen, I feel like that was much later, but that was nearly seven, eight, maybe seven and a half years ago, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. But it went through a number of iterations because obviously it was a challenge in terms of performance. It was it was definitely something that was a, a long-term challenge, I feel like, for the team. And then space balls, and then some more oxygen updates and upgrades. And uh, what else? Oxygen farm. So we're really preparing for something. Mm moment and and still I, I still don't see the the planets in the in the list we're, it, so it's, it's we're still probably 20 we're still probably 25 updates away from planets <laughs> this is like maybe just a few months from the planets so what we added we added ship weight points for the autopilot then yeah then we switched to directx 11 and uh which is obviously a huge, another huge undertaking was to get everything into at DX11. And that was a, that was a continue, it wasn't like everything was DX11 
after date like it was a it was a i think it was a continuous process to convert everything to use pbr and stuff by the way i just realized if people want to see uh these updates yeah they can check this link and uh if they want to see it sorted by by time like from the oldest to the newest you can just click on the on the thing in, in youtube and you will see the list and then you can go chronologically you know from the oldest updates yeah. to the newest so so if you're interested we- guys in, in doing that and if you if you're ever curious like how the really how the the game was kind of built up step by step you can check that yeah that you, if you just go to the space engineers youtube channel the videos link and then sort by oldest it is really interesting to see like, and you can kind of go over it all and you can scroll through it but it's just interesting to see how it evolved step by step to where we are today and um yeah it's it's, it's wild and again some of the things that we have and the plans even beyond grid ai woo, it's if only i could uh, if only we could go into all of it today <laughs> so then we are the jump drive and uh, then we added some new particle effects and so on and, and many, many smaller things. And I want to quickly jump to, then there was the, this was, uh, uh, then there was the first unofficial planets teaser, basically. So we just showed the planets. The first ever video footage of planets, obviously in it, People went obviously nuts when they saw that because this was really something that we said for a while that we weren't doing planets. And it was the number one thing probably from the game's inception that people were asking about. Like not everyone was interested in planets, to be honest, but the majority, it was definitely what people were asking for. So it was a, it was a huge deal to have that, that first teaser in that kind of classic style, teaser style. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then we were preparing for the planets and then we released the planets it was six six years ago so yeah it, it was pretty much it yeah it released october 25th i don't know if it was on the anniversary it would have been very close to it though because i'm seeing that the no actually planets released in november actually so it wasn't quite for the two-year anniversary but it's amazing actually again like planets was so long ago now but it was again it was such a massive milestone but it was actually done two years after the game came out like so it was it came out a lot sooner after the game release compared to how long ago that was now right mm-hmm. yeah yeah so so that's it joel that's up to the planet up to the planets and that was only two years and then what followed was another seven years of development guys up to this point so a little a little kind of refresher I'm, I'm sure many of you were here for that whole process live but i know we've got players joining us the last couple of years and you probably use a lot of these features on a day-to-day basis, but um, may not realize that how long ago uh, they were added. And um, yeah, just it was just, it was it was such a, I mean, I still really, really enjoyed that time of space engine development. Like, I think nearly everyone liked it in terms of this weekly update thing. It was difficult for modders. It was difficult for server admins because things were always changing on a week-to-week basis. and. You, it, to have that stability that we have now in terms of, you know, the servers can be running and, and even if there are some quirks to an update, players at least have some months to kind of to adapt to it and come up with their own kind of workarounds if there is, you know, problems that way. But yeah, back in the day, modders, it was exciting because, you know, it was always, we wanted to push the game to the to, the, to its b- biggest potential. But yeah, it was it was hard sometimes to not kind of changed the way that things were done. So it's, uh, yeah, 100%, 100% um, been a journey. <laughs> New stuff. Okay. All right. So that was some of the original updates. And obviously the last couple of years since release, we've been having around three to four updates a year. And they've kind of varied in size and they've obviously been featuring both free and premium content and it's it's been a learning process i think for us and definitely when it comes to the balance of content um we've been working on that working to improve that and i think we've 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 actually these last kind of ones you've got a really kind of good 
uh, good thing going, I think. And I think many of our players uh, appreciate that mix of content that we have. So, Marek, we'll, in terms of this list here, we'll, we'll do the Thursday thing after this. Let's, let's kind of give a little insight into the future for Space Engineers then. Uh, starting off with the Grid AI update. Where is it? What's happening? When can players, when might players be able to expect it? Uh, you're muted, I think. Yeah, so hopefully soon. And uh, we're still polishing it. So, and Joel, do you have some surprise for today or not? I do. So, yeah. would you guys like to see a live demonstration of the Grid AI update? <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> I don't, I, don't, I don't know the last time we did this, Marek. I don't think we normally do this, but it's the anniversary. Let's let's do something. Let's do something radical. <laughs> no, Green Bean doesn't want it. All right, some people said no, so I think we'll have to. Uh, that's it. We got a couple people not into it. <laughs> right. So what I will say though before I bring this up is, of course, this is still work in progress, guys, and there shouldn't be any bugs in what I'm about to show you, but there might be. So. Um, Keep that in mind, it's all experimental. Let's load it up. Okay, gonna open this. Oh, it was there for a second, there we go. So welcome to Space Engineers Build 202. And we have a drone here. You may recognize this drone from uh, the, actually this is from the frostbite scenario. But on this particular one, we have two new blocks. What could these blocks be? Well, we're gonna quite easily convert this drone into something that will actually uh, be useful for us. So we open a control panel here. We can see an AI move block and an AI basic block here. So going over the AI move flight, we can see we have AI behaviors on. We have collision avoidance, we have some precision, we have a speed limit for this and also an altitude slider. So this is all pretty set up. This, is, this one's good. The flight is set up um, fine for now. But let's, let's, let's show you guys uh, some kind of uh, basic functionality here of what you might be able to do with one of these drones. So you may have seen a similar teaser in the, the recent weeks that Marek posted. So on the, on the AI task block, we have a couple of objectives here. We have follow home, follow player, and autopilot. So I already have it selected on follow player. We can change how close you want to, how, how close you want this to follow. Let's put it at like 10 meters. And if I hit follow me, it's gonna start following me and now uh, I think everything's turned on correctly. So I hope when I start moving here, <laughs> it's typical. I just set this up before the, before I showed this here. What am I missing here? Okay. Let me try turning, toggling on again. You know what I did before I turned this on? I, I actually changed something before I showed this here. So let's just go, let's try something else. I'll reset it here. We will set home to this base over here. Let's do this. I think it's because I, I know what I did. Again, there's a reason. I know you guys are, are hoping for this, but we really are. It's kind of, we're kind of trying to polish it, aren't we, Marek, in a way. This is, this is the, the main thing. So let's create a GPS. But there's this here. If not, I'm going to reset this guy. Right, so select this as the waypoint for home and off it goes, off that drone goes back. It's, it's returning home. Um, now, one of, the main, one of the cool things about this update is gonna be is, is how easy it will be to set up stuff. Now, a lot of things, people have done a lot of things with drones and mods and scripts and, and all kinds of things, but this is basically making it so it's very easy to actually set these guys up. So let's actually try and land on this guy and we'll try and switch it back to following me here. It's not gonna kick me off. Let's 
back to this. Is it gonna start following me now? Yeah, there we go. Finally, there we go. As you can see, I have a friend. I'm gonna call this guy Django. Django Mark II. As you can see here, I now have a friendly drone, and this could be designed as a, you know, maybe you'd want this as a cargo. This could be following you around and you could be putting stuff inside it. Or and as, as this one's set up, you could be setting this up to actually uh, defend you, right? So here it is going. <laughs> Mark II, yeah. Don't let him hear that. <laughs> so this is just a little preview of some of the obviously there is always going to be more in, in in our updates and that that's not just like uh the, the grid ai itself but there's also going to be some really cool blocks which i could show you by accident maybe but i think we're going to keep some of those surprises to later but i just wanted to show we wanted to show today just uh, a little bit of the the work in progress of a couple of the the new AI um, blocks and the functionality. What do you think, Marek? Was that was that a was that a demonstration? Okay for today. Keep the rest for later. Yes, yes, I agree. Super, super. Well, there we are. <laughs> Show us. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's have a look here. You can actually see it actually avoiding things as I was, as it, it, it doesn't try to like, it tries to, it does actually try to avoid the asteroids there. So that was pretty cool. But that was your sneak peek to the Grid AI update, showcasing two of the blocks, the AI move and the AI task block here. But the uses, I'm sure our community will find even more uses than we already are planning for. So there we are. <laughs> um, let me see if Marek, did you just mention just the, the general status of it, Marek? Because obviously players are asking when, can, when might they be able to expect it and like what we're trying to do with it. I think we are quite close, and, uh, but we are still polishing the update. That's, the, that's, that's, that's probably a, a pretty good way of putting it, I think. Um, and we do want to get it to you guys uh, as soon as possible, but also we want to make sure that there aren't any kind of uh, major bugs and trying to get it as, as stable as possible. Um, and I don't know, Marek, if we can touch on a little bit beyond Grid AI update, because obviously people are excited for AI, but what can players expect beyond the next update? Maybe just some general topics that we want to look into and things that we want to improve. So, uh, progression, survival, scenarios, I would say in, in very general, vague terms, that will be our next focus after this one. But also many life, uh, quality of life improvements, and also make the game uh, easier for new players, in some sense. Uh, but again, like disclaimer, not dump down the game. It's just like make it less confusing for new players. Because, you know, like if you are new and you launch the game, there are many things that just too much, too much information, basically, that can confuse you on, on its own. So so those are the things. And then beyond that, uh, we're also working on VRH3, as you know, uh, the water. If you will check check out my Twitter or, or Space Engineers Twitter or Facebook or something, you will see the, the newest uh, videos from the water that we are showing. And the last one was that Petr Minajik made, uh, uh, I asked him basically uh, to, to remake some gravity uh, driven uh, fountains in Italy. So he remade them in, in, his, in their water prototype. So water is one of the big things for VH3. The others, the other are uh, like DirectX 12, New West Havoc, some big changes in the grid system, and and many other things. I think we should do uh, a live stream focused on VH3 with some of the engine programmers sometime because I think people will be very interested. Well, I mean, the last time we did when we did the water stream, people were really 
really interested to see what we were working on. It was obviously more technical than the kind of gameplay side of things, but that's the main thing, guys, is that um, in terms of like the, the, the gameplay and the game that uh, in terms of improving upon the, the existing uh, features, you know, where we are looking at progression, survival scenarios. And these are areas uh, that I know, especially in the survival department, people obviously are, are, are looking at improved encounters, improved uh, elements of that to make survival more um, uh, more immersive and more exciting. So that is definitely one of those areas. Um, and also, I should just come back to the grid AI. The grid AI, it's worth mentioning that this is kind of like how to work, like the, the first iteration in the sense that this is really our first kind of diving into AI in a bigger way in Space Engineers. But for sure that we would also like to build upon this and uh, bring more features to that. So that's that's also, I think, worth mentioning. that This is like the first kind of real step into AI-based uh, features in the game. So uh, yeah, that should be, that's to so that's sum that up. And again, coming back to the V-Rage 3 stuff, this is really some highly experimental, like um, trying to do things that have never been done before. And the, the programmers are really working on some incredible things for V-Rage 3. And we did that stream and I do hope we can do another stream soon with new things on that. Um, there was one more point about that I wanted to mention, Marek, uh, the, the V-Rage. Oh, and I guess that that also leads to hiring. Unless you wanted to, did you highlight that things you wanted to mention this again? The yeah, I, I was just about to that for the VH3, we need uh, much more programmers than we already have. So if there are some programmers in the in the live stream, please reach out to us and uh, could join our team. And uh, I think working on VH3 is, is really a, a dream job for a programmer. Like it would be definitely for me. As I mentioned, uh, there is, uh, you know, like we are doing it in C Sharp, it's the newest Direct X12, uh, Havoc, and we're probably the only game that has such a large, uh, you know, universe uh, that can be um, like created and destroyed and uh, modified and where things interact with each other in really physical and engineering uh, sandbox manner. So, uh, and also, in VH3, we did huge improvements on what is called entity component system. So the game will scale up to multiple cores much more naturally or easily than than uh, space engineers. And uh, uh, this will allow in VH3 much bigger uh, grids and uh, or if not bigger than, you know, like higher FPS. And uh, so there are many very interesting programming achievements that we have already done. So if you uh, like pushing boundaries and working on challenging things and really working on something that is not so usual in the gaming industry, then please reach out to us and uh, and, and we can talk about you joining Keen. Yeah, really guys, like we are, um, we're always, we always are, always have been looking for new talent, but um, like I think almost almost like now more than ever, we're really looking uh, for people who really want to push it to the next level and really work on um, uh, yeah, pushing the boundaries, experimental stuff and trying to uh, how to work like break down walls, you know, like do things that really haven't never been done before in games. So uh, please do check our careers page um, on the Keen Software House website. I think Rotal linked it there and uh, consider it because um, we would love to have you. Yeah, exactly. And, and again, as I said, I think that the main uh, selling point of joining in is that uh, in Village 3 and Space Engineers, we're really working on some kind of niche game that is this engineering sandbox. And uh, if you like to solve these kind of problems that we need to solve for such a physical and engineering sandbox game, then I think that Keen is, is the right place. Cool. I, I know. I mean, I, I've, I definitely see some people in the chat. I know who have uh, who have been thinking about it for a while. So, we, we've it's it's amazing how many members 
of our uh, community actually have then ended up joining the company. It's, it's really, and, and it's always great because um, obviously it's not a requirement, but it, it's often cool because these people have uh, have a history of kind of passion for um, for space engineers, which can be very useful. Uh, so just uh, another kind of touch on, again, okay, next year, guys, because nine every year is a big deal, right? Every year is another milestone reach, another year of not just a game releasing, because that, that can be the case for many, many old games, but this is actually nine years of actually continued development, right? Still new stuff in the pro in in the in the uh, in progress. Still many more exciting features and blocks uh, in the pipeline. But really, for next year, for ten years, um, we really want to do. We want we're planning to do something big, and maybe multiple big things. Uh, we we can't say too much. I mean, unless Marek wants to kind of, I'll leave it up to him if he wants to touch on like what that could look like. But in general, um, I know this is very vague. But we really want to do something big for the decade and um, almost have the biggest space engineers party ever, if you see what I mean. So what do you think about Matt? Anything to add to that? I think you already said it. Already said it. Too much, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's not too much. I think it's okay. just the right amount that next year it will be 10 year anniversary. So we really should do something bigger. And, and now it's up to Joel actually to start planning it and coming up with something specific. So. We have orange area, you know, so basically we have the space, we can do whatever we want here. So that's it. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be, it's, it's, one, it's going to be one of my, uh, one of my tasks is going to be to, to make the decade uh, a really, a, a good way to remember a decade of space engineers. So, and I think the point is, of course, this will, anything that this involves will involve the community massively. So. Um, that was that point and um, kind of talking of that it's just reminded that we had our open day at the Keen Software House offices yesterday actually we had uh, I don't know, remember the numbers how many people came around was it 40? Uh, I say, yeah I think something like 40 yeah we had around 40 uh, people from well both from the community but also uh, people just with a general interest in AI and game development visited the offices uh, some people in the chat were also also came. I see Rivian's in the chat. Rivian's still in Prague, I think. So it was, uh, yeah, always really great to to be able to kind of present some of our work to both uh, you know new uh, new potential new players and also existing players, but also just to spend time uh, face to face time with members of our community was was really awesome. And um, I won't really go into it, but we, you know, we also sometimes have some really cool brainstorming sessions and from some casual conversations that we have with fans in, in person sometimes can lead to some really interesting ideas that may or may not, uh, you know, come to the game at some point. Um, so yeah, just once again, thanks for that. And it's a reminder that we love that so much and it's definitely what we want to do more of in the future. Uh, I think we're really getting through these points now, aren't we, Marek? Was uh, oh uh, next Thursday, so yeah. next this or this coming Thursday. So this, that's going to be Thursday, the twenty seventh of October. Um, let me see. Let's see here. Would you like to announce, Marek, what is going to be happening on the on the twenty seventh? So it will not be uh, good idea yet. But... Yeah, it won't be the release, the update release. We should clear that up. <laughs> We'll be uh, showcasing a new tool called uh, Spaceship uh, Generator, made by uh, some AI researchers uh, together with Good AI, and uh, it's a tool for space engineers, helping you like basically evolving new spaceship designs for for the game that then you can later uh, export to Blueprint, load in the game, and play play with. So uh, that's something that we will be showing next Thursday and like showing you how to use it and then also releasing the tool it will be it will be actually open source it's it will have source code on the github so people can then take it and start basically modding yeah it's 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 this big because um if you've been following some of the updates we post online and some kind of presentations uh for, for a while like good ai and keen software house have been very separate in the sense their work has been obviously focused on separate things but 
in the last kind of year, there's definitely been kind of more, uh, I say collaboration, but also just more like, you know, good AI, the researchers using space engineers for some interesting uh, experiments. But again, one of those things is this, um, uh, so the spaceship generator. And we're going to be joined on Thursday again by Marek, but also Martin Poliak, which is one of our good, AI, which is one of the our good AI, uh, good AI researchers. And he's also going to be kind of uh, showing us the tool and answering questions from the community. But it's really exciting though that it's going to be open source as well. So um, there's going to be this certain functionality with it. But I am certain if there are modders out there who we have a lot of them who want to like uh, kind of dig in and and take things to you know even beyond they'll be able to do that because it will be basically all be on uh, uh, github right i think Marek, that's it's all on it's, it's all there at least it all will be there i think yeah so thursday it's going to be a, it's going to basically be a devs lost in space but a very special edition so um look, as we're seeing ai more and more aren't you Marek? it's like grid ai there's this this kind of like Good AI's uh, spaceship generator. As it seems as it's very AI themed at the moment. <laughs> so that was uh, another really cool thing um, that we're going to be showing on Thursday. So we hope you join join us for that. Uh, some questions about this. Oh, we'll leave the questions about that for sure for Thursday. So super. <laughs> yeah, much better. Yeah. And I think, Marek, if there's if there's other things, we can finish on the ceiling, I think. That can be a nice one to finish on. So if there's anything else that you really wanted to discuss today, um, kind of go over. Um, I, I think that's all. So let's, let's look on the ceiling. Okay. So uh, some of you guys may have seen this already. Possibly it was on social media and some posts. Um, but also, let me see, it may have been on a stream as well. Just a kind of cool way to wrap things up. This is the amazing um, image that we actually have on the the roof of our uh, offices in Prague. Let me just get this up. Hold on. Okay. Let's make good. Ah. Almost there. Almost there. It's a big picture. It's like a hundred hundred meg. So. There it is. That is, this is, this image took so much work. It's, it's unbelievable. Like, uh, this is really, it's, it's kind of cool if we could show it as well on the roof of, uh, the main lobby. So if you, if you guys ever come to the Keen Software House and Good AI, Good AI offices in Prague, um, we, yeah, you'll see this and it, this is massive. How big is it, Marek, in, in like real life? It feels like seven or ten, ten meters, you yeah. know, wide. So it's it's really big. So it's yeah, seven to ten meters wide. But that, that's there's a lot going on. But when you see it on the ceiling, you're like looking up, kind of like the Sistine Chapel, you know. And you're like, uh, there's there's so much to take in. And the longer you look at it, the more things that you actually spot hidden in it. Like I still now. I'm spotting little Easter eggs uh, inside it here. So yeah, 10 meters or yeah, around that still, it's massive, massive, massive image. Now Jim is asking, I, I think we've had some of these before. Jim is asking, can we get a print of that on the merch store? <laughs> People probably want this in their own homes. What do you think, Marek? Well, maybe we can start selling it. Some kind of pictures with nice, you know, historical frame. And actually, guys, if you see this uh, this border, that's because that's the shape of it in the office. It has like this kind of outline, which is going to be yes. framed. So it really, like, should I zoom in on America or should I leave it like this? What do you think? Keep the surprise? I think it's a good idea to zoom in somewhere. Okay. By the way, uh, you also have a version that has that doesn't have this kind of border, but has a normal border, right? So it's a oh, just a square. Okay, rectangular version. So if you so, if you zoom in on some of this here. What can we see? And, and by the way, <laughs> Natik, Natik has painted this. It took him over a year. And, but of course, he wasn't working full time just on this. He was also working on other things. 
but we went through many iterations so that's why it took one year you know like slowly getting uh, back to it and so on and <laughs> and uh and and the, the idea was that it's inspired by this baroque uh, fresca you know uh that or like 16 16 chapel those kind of things that they used to paint in, in baroque times or uh, renaissance or you know and uh, which usually has the, the the theme is that there is some person like looking from top like to bottom on you mm -hmm. there are some goals, there are some clouds and um and there are all these lightning <laughs> and lighting is very important and also usually the 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 main um guy or the main team is 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 lit with the with the with the, the, the light mm -hmm. there are many different scenarios going on at the same time but they don't actually interact with each other so they are just like independent scenarios like everywhere this is what they were doing in this uh, in this old uh, fresca or, or this this kind of paintings you can find you know in old buildings all over the the europe I almost wanted to say all over the world but so i don't I... think <laughs> it's elsewhere than i think it's only in europe probably so i tell so... you a bit about the process i started to talk a bit more of the process Marek, because i actually i have some of the stats about it i think so It'd be cool if Natik was here, actually. I actually kind of, I actually think we should do a short video on this, like both showing this and in person talk about it, because it really was like six, nine months of work. So the original image was actually, uh, it was it was a concept art done by a fantastic Mike Hamlet, and he basically designed the rough. He had the shape, of what it was going to be, and he had like planets would be here. There'd be characters like in a spiral in the center. There'll be kind of like some cracked asteroid there. So he he did the basic layout. And then it was handed to me and my job was to set up the the basic, uh, the, the kind of main uh, layout here. So I put all the planets in, I put this asteroid belt and I got the assets that, he didn't really draw the assets. So I kind of found ships that look like the assets. So I was adding in, not all of them, but I was adding in a lot of the, the, the kind of assets here. But then the main work really came from Natik, who spent many months on it, iterating it. And actually, a lot of these uh, characters and objects, they're all, not all of them, but a lot of them are individual layers. Because especially to get like these kind of clouds and god rays, they had to be kind of separated here. So he added in some new ships, some new characters. And there was a lot of, uh, I mean, I think the, the Photoshop file is 400 gigabyte in size. Like, four zero zero gigabyte and it's just just absolutely <laughs> blows my mind i think it must have been so laggy honestly i mean even with a beast pc and it had hundreds of layers hundreds of layers so this uh really uh was uh because you, you look at this and think oh that's a pretty pretty cool picture but it's when you zoom in like you know i don't know let's zoom into the classic thing here like even that right that could be a screenshot right what is the, I, don't, I had to check the resolution here. I don't know what the resolution is, but the resolution had to be so high because when you print this out at like seven meters or 10 meters in size, you, you don't want it to be pixelated right. So like there is just an immense amount of detail in here. So that's why everything kind of had to be layered up and, and so on. So yeah, that's, 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 that's gone, Mark. Usual, uh, there are a few Easter eggs or a few special yes. situations in here so maybe you can show some of them for example like the always has been oh wait where is the oh here yeah yeah <laughs> wait you know, so it's, it's... Like you, you, have, you have two space engineers or astronauts <laughs> with the one with a pistol and there is a planet so like this is the the original always has been meme i literally it's... never knew that i never knew that this isn't this, <laughs> this is my first time realizing that was in there yeah yeah, yeah. because i think like at some point, probably in the middle of the process, we realized that we don't want to just have some images from space engineers. We want to have like these little secret messages, you know, hidden. And then we actually were thinking quite hard about like different things that we want to show. So obviously there has to be the Cyberdog, the original Cyberdog, spiders, you know, Django. <laughs> so yeah, this is this is this is Django, my cat in a spacesuit and even this took look at it they got the Nati got the reflection there so yeah and if you get just also my cat Django 
he used to come to the office quite regularly. Back when I had kind of like the old offices, I kind of had like a studio with a green screen and a streaming room. And for some time, for like at least a year, I think, he was often coming with me to the office and he had like a, like a litter tray and everything in the office. So yeah, he was, he was kind of a, yeah, a technically a part of SC history there, but you wouldn't spot that. Actually, Vlado was telling me when he brings like, uh, like he sometimes, you have like school groups coming to the offices and he asked them, he's like, okay, who's the first person who can spot the cat in the, in the image here? And again, like now you know where it is, but when you're looking at this on the ceiling and it's massive, it actually takes, it can take like a while to spot it here. But yeah, we've got the Cyberhound down here. For, for better or for worse, the Cyberhound, Saberoid. Who else we got? We got ladders, we got Clang. Couple of Clangs in there, I think. There's another Clang in the mist. That looks so sick. Um, so what else have we got here? Some nice, this is, this is some nice ship, awesome McD ship there. The classic red, the new red. I'm trying to think what else other Easter eggs we got in there. Uh, the red stuff getting. Was there and the, in the structure is that the left side of the image is uh, creation and the right side is destruction. Ah, that was the idea, wasn't it? You have like creation on one side. Right. Actually, Olga, Olga uh, worked on this with us quite a lot. Like, we, ah, we have yeah. This team, right? Like this action force. Natik, Mike, Joel, Olga, me. And, and I really hope I didn't forget somebody else. <laughs> and then Yardo, he managed the... Because like how to get it on the ceiling. So we found a company that can uh, basically print on a, like a... Like, uh, how to call it, Joel? You know, this wallpaper. Canvas? Yeah, this canvas or wallpaper. So it's a wallpaper that is, you know, like, like many square meters. And they can also uh, glue it to the to the wall or to the ceiling. So the, the last step was then to to uh, to print it on this uh, on this uh, wall and, and, and put it up. And I think there is still one last thing that, that we need to do, and it's to add some proper historical frame to the yeah some golden the... embellishment kind of around the outside that's actually really cool because actually you see that the, the actually the color of the fog shifts as well we have kind of this orangey vibe on the left side right and as we shift around we have like destruction lightning battles you have my uh white and black ship there so yeah it's uh it, it's it's awesome and i i can see it's, it's great to see the reactions in the chat but i'm telling you guys it's like 10 times cooler when you see it in person and it's it's absolutely massive like you know you just look up and you can just stare at it for uh for yeah many 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 minutes so that was another little thing that we haven't shared before but i think a nice uh thing to wrap this ninth anniversary stream on actually because in in, in many ways this kind of summarizes space engineers you have all you have it all you have the the engineering the construction the destruction some of the things you can do in the game the planets the asteroids space elevators you know it's it's all there clang cyberhounds <laughs> so it was it really was um a huge undertaking i think it was i, I don't know if natik spent more time than anything else if you see what i mean i think it was possibly his life's greatest work you know that that saying like his like his um uh, What's the saying? I guess it's just his masterpiece or something. I think this is masterpiece, yeah. yeah. And also I'm happy that he was so, uh, so uh, like willing to go through all these iterations because it really took a lot of time and, and you know, like probably after 20 iteration, we still ask him for more and more and more and he was willing to continue. So uh, he really had patience with us. If you think about it, it, it could easily have gone on forever because there's always more you want to show in Space Engineers. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I easily imagine like, oh, let's add this in or that, that meme or this like this connection or that like nostalgia thing. Because there's actually just, as I say, there's nine years of it. But I think at some point it's like, okay, we need to actually <laughs> print it, you know, so. So out of interest, let me know in the chat, put an 07 in the chat if you guys would be purchase, uh, interested in like getting your hands on some of on this in some form, I'm really curious here. Like a in a you know poster, canvas, who knows what we could do? We don't have nothing planned yet, but I'm just curious the interest 
in what people would have to own something like this. That's a lot of 07s, Marek. That's, that's, that's a couple of... That's, that's, a, that's a flood of 07s in the chat. Goodness me. Poster. The thing is, you'd want it really big as well. Like, if you had it as like an, like an A... Even like an A3 poster... I feel like you'd want it bigger. Like, I feel like to really, because if you see it now, right, you can kind of squint, but like to see all the details, I don't know what the minimum size would be. Like if you zoom in like that, like maybe like, I don't know, what is that? Like in width, maybe like, two, maybe like, maybe like one and a half meters width. I feel like I had to think about it, but we'll think about it for sure, guys. And um, it's really great to see that you're, Really great to see the enthusiasm to get your hands on something like this. Oh, Ashley Merrick, how about putting this in game? <laughs> putting this in game is like something that people can like, uh, you know, as like a painting or something, or like, or like an LCD screen or something like that. Could be really cool. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm typing it down. There you go. There you go. Like a decorative for your like for the the captain's captain's quarters. <laughs> Natik needs a promotion. <laughs> well, mm. Awesome. And I think you're right. Like, I think it's like the squared version would be really cool for the for the poster style, of course. I've never seen the square version, actually. So I'm, I'm really curious when you when you square this off and have like the, the full... I mean, I don't think there's anything in the corners, though, is there? It's probably just like the clouds and the lightning. We don't have any more ships like hidden behind, I, I believe. But still... Mm. Yeah, but but it looks also good uh, like not not let's say empty space you know with just clouds it looks interesting great super 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 let's have a look then well i honestly think malik we have covered everything we wanted to cover today nearly I know there were some other things that we may have had, but we can always uh, keep them for next year's uh, anniversary uh, anniversary events. Great. So this was a really nice, nice live stream. Basically, we spent two hours. Yeah. And uh, it was really good to come back, you know, in time and remember all the nice beginnings and, and then the progression after that. And ending with this ceiling was a good idea because it really is like a summarization of what we achieved so uh, thank you joel and thank thanks everyone for being here with us and see you next thursday when we'll be talking about the spaceship generator exactly and really guys uh Marek, thank you so much for coming uh it was it's really great to to have you here for this momentous occasion and to, I, I really enjoy looking at those those old pictures of, of Keen and uh, and yourself in the hitch. That was really, because even for me, that's something that I've never seen before. So that was really great to see. And thank you, awesome community, because we really have the best community out there. You guys keep on blowing our minds in every way. Like really like from the, just from the general vibes, from the comments, that we get from the creations you build, from the mods you make and the scenarios and just all the support, all the support that you give us and all the support that you give uh, your fellow community members is always really, really uh, amazing to see. It's, it's been quite the ride. It's been quite the ride. And we hope you stick with us for the next chapter of that. The next really. nine years. The next least. nine years. Yeah, there you go. Next nine years. I think I think in the next nine years, Mark, I think we have some pretty cool pretty cool things planned, right? <laughs> Maybe one or two. <laughs> well, hopefully sooner than nine years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> it. The next update's in nine years, guys. You heard it from Marek. Grid AI, <laughs> nine years time. What would be twelve that even be? Oh, that, that was what's scary, Marek. That's gonna be twenty thirty. Twenty thirty one or whatever. That's that's pretty yeah, so, so you will be an old man. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll definitely be, I have no hair at that point, probably. <laughs> you will be twenty then. I'll be uh, I'll be twenty finally. <laughs> <laughs> finally twenty. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, 
Yeah, what I meant by nine years is really the, the like long-term outlook of space engineers. Uh, and uh, because as it has been going for the last nine years, I think it can go for next nine and more. I don't see an end to what can be done in space engineers. 100%. And I say, both from our side, it's, it's just like, even now, like I, it's just the fact that we really see even when we haven't released an update in a while, every time I play load the game up, every time I do a stream, there's still something amazing being done, either in vanilla, that people are finding new uses for our blocks, or via mods. So this this whole nine years, there's never been like a, a dull moment in that sense. There's always, always something being released um, and being created that we wouldn't have expected ever probably. So. Keep on doing it, guys. Keep on engineering. Keep on building. We love to see it. And Thank yeah, you. And on Thursday, we'll see you guys on Thursday for the the spaceship generator stream with uh, Martin from Good AI. So, until Thank then, you. guys. Thank you Bye so guys. much. Thank you. Thank you, Marek. Bye, guys.